So <clears throat> today I'm going to try to make a book cover for this book, or at least start on it. I haven't figured out if I will be able to finish or not because I might want to wait for the first step to dry before I proceed. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be necessary or not. Anyway, I'm just going to play it by ear. This is a little bit new. new experiment <clears throat> using a few different techniques so we'll see how it goes the first thing this is the book I'm gonna work on I just pulled one off of the stack it just happened to be the one on top I give each a, each book a name um, just a code name so that all my components that are stacked together have that word on it so I can match them up in case they get misplaced or strewn about um this one's called fitzgerald no particular significance <laughs> to that name so that's why we got the random title oh i forgot i was gonna mention i bought these i've been talking about wanting to get some smaller glue bottles because this one um by the time it's you know empty like I, I'd like to clean it out more often because by the time this one gets empty it has kind of just globs of glue in there that have dried on the side and it's kind of hard to clean out. It's hard to reach the bottom. Some kind of a stick or something. Um, so these ones are smaller which means they're easier, to, should be easier to clean out but also um, they'll get used up quicker. And I got a couple of them because I thought I could maybe use one for my methyl cellulose paste. I've never put that in a bottle before, but it'd be a lot easier to, you know, squeeze it out into the mix like I do if it was in a bottle. Um, so yeah, I think I might like that. What would be really cool is if this amount of volume fit in there, but I think it won't quite fit in there. But that's fine. So I'll just have to make small batches of it at a time. Which, it's actually good to make small batches, so it doesn't spoil, like if I don't use it quick enough. So, alright, so first things first, I'm going to pull out those book boards that I double, glued double together for strength, and see if they're flat. Hope so. Do the small ones first, these are the ones I put in the 
book presses, the double sized ones that I didn't cut in half are just under my granite slab weight and they've been under there for I guess like two days now so plenty of time to dry. Hopefully they stayed flat. If not then I may not do anything. So I bought these glue bottles at my local art store which is like my favorite favorite store in, in the city pretty much or definitely my favorite art store around they have a lot of random things that other stores don't have like used things that they buy off people and sell for pretty cheap uh, but then they also have the standard supply of art supplies that you would expect okay that's super sturdy that's good don't remember which direction the grain was on this one. Looks like I put an arrow on there, so must be going this way. Okay, let's see how flat it is. Feels pretty flat. It's not moving on the table at all. So at the moment it's flat. This isn't necessarily the ultimate test or reveal though, because sometimes like right out of the the press or out out of being weighed down upon um they're most likely going to be flat but after they've settled for a while they might develop some kind of curve in them but let's hope for the best and just assume it'll stay flat so as i was saying i went to that art store and um i bought these but i also i bought some other random things that i don't need to talk about really but there's some nibs pen nibs um I actually used those in the previous stream where I was trying to write really small. Um, but I, I also, <clears throat> it's also the place where I get these mat board cutouts because they used to have a frame shop. Um, they don't anymore. But they still have these leftover mat board cutouts in stock. Unfortunately, they massively raised their price though, probably because of the scarcity of them. Um, so I won't be buying them anymore there. So I'll have to find either a new supplier. Um, I bought quite a few over the years. I wish, honestly, I wish I would have bought tons of them. I, had I known they were going to do that, I would have. But anyway, I might find another frame shop that sells their scraps. Or maybe some, some of them even give them away if they don't use them. Which would be awesome. Anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, that was disappointing that they raise their price like it's like four times as expensive as what it used to be so it's not it's not economical to buy those anymore Actually did a little bit of uh, rock counting and the sand sorting late last night. Thought about streaming it, but I, I just couldn't sleep, so I got up and did that for a while. And I think I'm going to do that more often, just as a random activity. Might stream it. I'm just like super. Um, what's the word? I guess just fascinated with the how each rock can be so different. I want to take more photos of them, but unfortunately, my microscope. Um, in order to do photos, you have to have it hooked up HDMI instead of USB. It's kind of weird. So I'd either need to get like a really cheap monitor just to hook up to that um, for that reason, which seems really goofy. Um, or figure something else out, but it has a remote control 
them for the microscope, but this, as far as I can tell, this none of these controls do anything unless you have it um, hooked up via HDMI, and I'm using it like a USB webcam, so it does none of these buttons do anything in that mode. It's like kind of like a TV controller, so when it's hooked up to a monitor, these bring up an on-screen display and you can change the settings, but unfortunately they don't seem to do anything when it's in USB mode. So anyway, so I can't like, like there's a picture, a photo button on here and a video button. You can take photos like through uh, OBS or uh, like the Windows camera app, but they're, they're like 1080p or something. Whereas if you push the button on this thing, it's actually like 48 megapixels. So there's a big motivation to want to use that. Um, so this isn't perfectly flat, this second one, or maybe, yeah, it's, I mean, it's close enough, it's basically flat, but this corner is pushing down a little bit, which indicates there's a slight bow to the, to it, but it's insignificant, I think, it's basically flat. So I just have three of these half size ones, it looks like. And then I have a decent stack of the full size. But these are gonna go pretty quick, honestly, because I need two per book. Um, probably like this size, for example, this might not even be big enough. It is, okay, good. It's wide enough, just barely. But yeah, I'll need two of these for this size of book. Um, I do have a bunch of the small books, but they're not ready to be uh, bound yet. So I'm going to be working with about this size for this one. And then the whole stack of books that are ready to go with all the spine treatment and the ribbon and headbands and stuff. They're all approximately the same size. So that will use up the, the book boards pretty quick at that size. I wish I had some of the smaller ones ready. In fact, I'd rather do this whole experiment on a small one, but I don't I don't have any small ones ready. I could get one ready, but just work with what I have ready already. Ready already. Seems to make the most sense. But if this, whatever, I don't know, if I decide I need to wait for something to dry or something isn't, working or whatever, if I have to not proceed with this cover experiment, then I will probably just go back to gluing the books like I was doing before. Okay, let's see, some looks. This one's are totally flat and perfect. So I have three of this size. What I'll probably do is um, use these for smaller books so I can cut them in half and use the same board for a book for both sides. It's always a good idea to use the same, the same kind of board. So here's the ones that are all stacked up on top of each other with a piece of felt between each one. First one is that one that had the shimmery fabric uh, coating on it. I'm just going to pull these out and then I'll see how flat they are on the table. I don't know if one of these boards is tall enough to do two, two book boards for that book or not. We'll see. It'd be great if it was big enough for that. Oh, 
this one's extra thick. These last two actually, your last three, because they have the paper on either side of both boards, and then the boards are glued together, so they're pretty stinking sturdy. I wish I would have thought to put the arrows on those, because I'm not really sure about the grain direction, but when something's super sturdy, if it's hard as a rock, you don't really need to know the grain direction. It's more about if something's going to flex at all, you want it to flex parallel to the spine. But these might be so sturdy that they won't move at all. Okay, almost tipped over my little box of sorted rocks. I need to get those transferred. I think I might have knocked a couple, at least one of them out. I need to get those into my other sorting things. The covered ones so they don't jump around like that. I kind of like this one that I made, though. A little bit of pride involved in like, oh, that's so cute that I actually made the thing. But it, it's not going to last forever because it, it's not properly glued or anything. I just used scotch tape to hold it together, which not very good, but it's just what I had. That's the quickest way I could think to make it. Okay, this one's perfectly flat. That's great. I'm guessing they probably all are pretty good. This one perfectly flat also. Those, these first three are the ones that have the paper glued on either side of each board. These are crazy sturdy. I don't even know if I can figure out what direction the grain is. I think, I think they're probably going the short direction. I'm just going to assume that. I don't think it's a great concern, but I'll just mark them that way because I think that's correct. You don't want to mark anything too dark on here because the cover material isn't always totally opaque. So it could show through if you wrote like with a black sharpie or something like that. I write with a pencil so that if I really want to, I can erase it. That one's nice and flat. I think all the rest of these are definitely green going this way. very flat. Yeah, I think this is going to be a good successful method. Just, it's a shame to have to double up on the boards because in the past I've always just used single boards, but I've just had enough circumstances where the books have a slight bend in the cover that um, I'm just, I want perfection basically. I think this will achieve it. Yep, they're all quite flat. This one has just a tiny bit of movement, but very, like, almost indiscernible. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside. They're too small for a book. I mean, not too small to use one same board for both. So I'm guessing if I cut this in half, 
Oh, actually, this one, supposedly the grain direction is going the long way, so... And it's not tall enough to get two boards out of this book, so I'll set that one aside. I'm going to use one of the mega sturdy ones that has the paper on, glued on. I believe it looks like it should be big enough. It's going to be really close, though. Let's see. So I haven't finalize the dimensions yet because like I said this is an experimental process but approximately a couple millimeters extra here about a almost a full centimeter off of that so I need about 12.2 uh, so as long as this is like if it's 20 oh, you know as much as 25 centimeters then I'm Plenty. Oh yeah, so it's like 25 and a half, so we're to be in the comfort zone. As long as I don't trim too much off, I always trim a little bit off because when I glue these, they never quite line up, plus the paper's kind of hanging off the edge, and I want a nice clean edge to it. Plus I also have to verify that they are perfectly square, which they aren't always. So I usually trim just a tiny bit off every single side. As long as I don't trim off too much, it should still be big enough. My new paper cutter is not robust enough to cut through boards like this. It would destroy it, I'm sure. And it would just never make it through. So I still have to use the old by hand method when I'm cutting thick things like this. I was cutting against the ruler, it kind of bowed out, so you may not get a clean cut here. Tried to pull it in after I noticed that it might might turn out okay. My best cut ever. <laughs> Wish I had. Uh, what would make these cuts perfect? I searched high and low, but I could not find um, any razor blades that have a single bevel. I just couldn't find any. Might be a couple of makers out there, or I could. I guess I could make my own, but seems a little nuts. Anyway, it's having the the bevel on either side so you can see like the shiny bevel here has that same bevel on the other side um, that makes it when i'm cutting against a flat surface like this that bevel causes it to push out as it's going uh, through a thicker um, medium and if it had a flat bevel on the side that you're cutting against your ruler it would just cut straight down and i wouldn't have to try to angle it outward this way to compensate for that, which I kind of failed to do this time, and so it, the cut as it's going through the thick board, like, 
ramps out this way away from where you're cutting, which is super annoying. They don't get a perfectly perpendicular cut that way. I usually try to, like I said, instead of cutting vertical like this, I just angle the blades slightly to compensate, but it, it's hard to know exactly how much to angle it. I've gotten kind of a feel for it, but I sort of, I just failed to do it this time. So there's a definite, um, you won't be able to see it probably easily here, but the cut here has a just a slight angle. It's not perfectly perpendicular. Might be able to see if I angle it that way. So, yeah. It's not the end of the world, but it's annoying. I should search again, like high and low. And I'd even be willing to make my own razor blades if I thought that would work, but it might be a lot of work to grind out and just find a good piece of steel and grind an edge into it or something. Okay, so I like to mark the edges that I cut so I remember which ones are straight. And let's use that freshly cut edge as my basis for square. So just, I'm gonna use that trick that I showed a while back. Nothing really secret about it, but have this square thing. It's just a piece of aluminum that you can buy at a hardware store, but it has a right angle, so you can lay that on your desk and just align the, the ruler against the edge of the book or the paper, or whatever. That way, you know it's square for sure. You could just eyeball it, but. I like to use leverage tools when I can to make, make things even more accurate. You can see that it's not perfectly square like this this side here. It's a lot thinner than that side, so that's why I always check that. It could be argued that maybe I shouldn't even do this cut yet. Um, because I'm going to have to cut them again. But I don't know. I don't know. Not really thinking everything through right now. Try to angle my knife a little bit more out and make sure I'm snug with the straight edge. I just, it's kind of sloppy that, that first cut. I don't know what I was thinking. That should be a little bit more perpendicular. Okay, I think I will hold off on cutting the last two edges until I determine my dimensions that I need for this particular book. Um, so I don't trim off too much and end up not having enough cover material. So. So rather than do that right now, well, I'm going to pour the rest of this pop into my cup. That's the most important step of bookbinding. Oh, I wish I had a car. Wish I could get around. It's annoying. Need to return that crappy camera tracking device that I got at Hobby Lobby that didn't end up working and 
don't have a way to get there. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is make this little tube for the spine, just a tube of paper. I think I've decided to go that route. It's something I've not done before because it's not necessary for the size of the book, but it should reinforce the spine and give it stability over time and we'll see how it works. I haven't decided what kind of paper to use though. That does make a difference. I want something too thin so it could deteriorate or even tear over many uses. So something kind of heavy, but not so heavy that it makes the spine super rigid. I think I have something in mind. Actually, it's probably in here. This is that same paper I was using to glue onto the book boards. Should be it's thicker than your average like copy paper, but it's not like some cardstock by any means. I think it should be about right. In this case, it's actually the same paper that's in the pages here. So. I haven't figured out how big to make it. This is going to be very experimental. Okay, to measure the spine of a book, I just used to random piece of scrap paper. Looking for my scissors. They're there. Just as long as it's a little bit wider than the spine, it should be fine. I like a small square post-it note would be fine too. So the the spine is not actually equal all the way across. It's quite bumpy actually. You have three bumps where these tapes go across and then the even arguably higher bump where the um, headbands stick out a little bit, but I usually use the center bump as just a average reference point. So basically what I do is I squeeze in um, this thin piece of paper as tightly to the back as I can and curve it around the edges um, just to kind of get um, a measurement of how wide the spine is exactly and including the how much is needed to curve around and then what I'm going to do here this is a little bit different never done this before but I'm going to take a ruler this is this exact step can't be replicated unless you have a ruler that has the measurements start exactly at the edge some of them have like a bezel or bevel or a border around it, which I think is really annoying because you can't just stick the end against something. But <clears throat> you can find them at some hardware stores or other places. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clamp this on there so it doesn't move. I have these clamps. I don't know if it's long enough, but... sure it's still tight and that's why I'm clamping it. Okay, so now I can stand this up on the, on the spine and just measure straight up from the spine. So I'm thinking to add something like I might go with like 0.7 on either side. Maybe a little bit less than that. I'll try, I'm going to start with 0.5 centimeters, so 5 millimeters. Make a mark there and do the same on the other side. The reason I put the spine flat on the 
um, table is so that I'm measuring from from the same position on either side. Otherwise, you just you can't be sure. I think half a centimeter should be good. Except I need to put the mark on the same side of the paper. Okay, that just gives me kind of a ballpark. Well, hopefully it more exact, really, not not a ballpark. Well, I'm just a consistent measurement. This may or may not turn out to make any sense, but so I have the wrap uh, width along with half a centimeter on either side, and that's going to be how big I make the tube. I want I want this paper tube to cover the spine and then wrap around the edges of the book just a little bit. So what I'm trying to accomplish here, um, I don't know if I have any examples here. I guess I can have one of my books. So here's an example of a book I've made. Um, and when you open the spine, typically there's like kind of an empty hollow area behind the spine here. And I've never made like a paper tube inside there. It's just, uh, it's hard to explain, but there's, there are some reinforcing layers. But basically the idea is I want there to be a, a, a paper tube inside of that hollow area so that like instead of these points where it comes to a V like right here and right there, it'll actually be a continuous piece of paper inside of there. I think that's going to give it a little bit more strength um, and resistance to tearing at that point. Not significant. I mean, not like hugely, but it just, it's just something I've been wanting to try. So um, that's why I go, you know, like say a half a centimeter beyond the, the spine width because for for a book to be able to open like smoothly you kind of need that little wiggle room so you can see here that the opening goes a little bit beyond where the, the edge of the book is so it's kind of kind of random or not random but i mean it, i'm trying half a centimeter and see if that works out i don't know if less or more will be more functional but so this is my measurement for the tube. So I'm going to take the paper here. The height needs to be the height of the paper. Like the pages in the book. I can just and near the spine. I mean, it's there's no guarantee that the I got this perfectly parallel all the way down. So it might actually be thicker or thinner at certain points, but I'm going to measure right at the spine since that's where I'm making this tube arrow indicates the grain direction of the paper and you always want that to be parallel to the spine that's why I like to write those little arrows on there Is going to be these markings here that I made. Doesn't need to be totally exact, it's just close enough. The width is two point. Trying to skip these songs that have words in it because it 
feel like it'll be hard to talk over it. Okay, so 2.25, and then since I'm making a, a tube, I'm going to double that, so 2.25 would be uh, 4.5, plus I need a little bit extra to glue to make the tube, so I'm going to go with 5 centimeters. Then I'm ready to make my cuts. Alright, so there's my tube. I have my. Well, I cut off the measurements here, but I'm gonna fold it at the first mark. So 2.25. The same markings down here. So I'm going to try to fold it at this first mark here, and then that, that extra bit is going to fold over so I can glue it on the other side and make the tube complete. Hmm. The other thing to consider is where do I want to fold it um, and have that joint be. I'd kind of like that joint to be in the center, so I don't know, but that's, that's neither here nor there as they say. I can always just fold it differently after I've glued it. Glued the tube. Okay, got both ends folded and then I'll kind of flatten that out in the center. And then to make this Second fold a little bit easier. I'm going to score it because it's kind of hard to fold really thin things like that. All right, so the idea is that I'll glue that little bit over the edge. Complete my little tube here. You cut off just a sliver of this because you can see it's kind of curving out that way. It wasn't cut straight originally. Tons of songs with voices in them. I don't really like voices in my music that I listen to for streaming. Or really anything I listen to, I usually just listen to instrumental. Alright, this is all new, that's why I'm going so slow. I haven't done this particular process before. I just need to put glue on that little folded edge. I like to use a piece of wax paper to control where the glue goes.
don't need much. This bottle's almost empty. I'll probably just pretty much throw it away. Because I want to use my new smaller ones in the future. Oh, shoot. Where's my brush? There we go. I've been using this larger brush to brush the larger surface areas, like when I was gluing those boards together, but this is the one I use for pretty much everything else. I put the wax paper right at the edge of that larger flap paper, just to cover it up so I don't gl put gl too much glue on there. And all I need glue on is this little flap. for the spine. Give it a little bit of pressure with my bone folder. And so what I was talking about before is where do I want that um, join to be? And I think I want it to be in the center of the tube, not the side. So I'm going to refold this so that the place where it's glued is in the center, not the sides. That way the sides will remain as strong as possible. Just one continuous piece of paper. Oh, the other thing is I don't want to actually fold it in half like that. What I need to do, I was realizing this, I don't fold it at all. I just center it on here. And the fold will happen wherever it happens as it's... Um, Kind of wrapping around the spine. It won't be on the exact center because when you bend something like this, the, the fold wants to go farther out on this side than the other. Because it's, yeah, anyway, whatever. Okay, so what I need to do now is put some glue on the spine and then place this on there. And the... As I was talking earlier, the thing I'm not sure if I want to wait for is for this to to dry before I start working on the rest. But I think I'll I think I'll just put it in a book press, um, and it'll be partially dry, but maybe not completely before I start doing the next thing. But I'm going so slow; <laughs> it probably will be dry. I may need it. Okay, so the only other thing I would not sure of is if I wanted to put a, a little piece of wax paper inside here to make sure that that doesn't glue shut. I think that's probably a good idea. So, let's see. I did the same process kind of on my the big book that I finished recently and I found it very difficult to get the wax paper out of this tube once it was dry it sort of stuck to it um, not sure what to do about that exactly Like I said, this is all new and experimental, so I'll figure it out as I go. So basically, I'm just going to put this piece of wax paper in there so that my paper tube doesn't dry shut, because the glue might kind of soak through. 
one side. And then hopefully once it's dry, then I'll just pull this out. But last time I tried this, the wax paper got kind of stuck inside, so I wasn't able to get it out. I had to like tear it out in pieces, but I might need to get some extra thick wax paper or something. I think maybe make a double thick wax paper or just something that's not going to rip apart. I don't know. I don't even know if it's necessary, but I, I do believe that my little tube might glue shut if I don't do that so all right next step is putting a bunch of glue on the spine for this tube to attach to and then I throw it on there to see what happens this glue is almost empty so hopefully that's enough I have another bottle but Let's start with this. How it connects with the headband and all this is very unknown. This little place here, since it's sticking up, I was kind of worried that glue might get inside the tube and glue it shut. That's kind of why I thought it would be important to put the, the wax paper inside. I also don't want glue to get onto the side of the pages because they're cut and finished and ready for the final product. So I don't want to put too much glue on there that it's going to squeeze out on the end. Need to do this pretty quickly too because this is straight PVA and PVA glues dries quite fast. Might not have enough here. I might have to get my other bottle. That's probably good enough. Okay. I'm going to use the little halfway marker as... Well, actually, I'm just going to visually center it, pretty much. It's going to be difficult, but... Especially with that wax paper there, it makes it harder to see when it's centered. Ugh. Maybe I should... No, I can't really put that in afterwards. It needs to be in there now. And this is not easy. I'm going to have to come up with a better process. Also kind of messy. That's pretty centered. Now I just need to get this side centered. Oh, I can just look at it from this side, of course. Much easier. Okay, now I'm going to push it on really well. Use my bone folder. Make sure it's making good contact on the, all the weird, bumpy, wavy side of the spine. And then this next part is going to be challenging. I need to wrap these around the side as tightly as I can. This whole process might not even work like I hope and it might be a total flop and I'll never do it again. So this whole thing is a grand experiment. Just a theory I have that I feel like it will make for a stronger opening when you open the book. I just feel like the cover will last a little bit longer. Not that I'm concerned about the covers, but this will make them even better, potentially. So I am going to put this under pressure because there's no way this is going to stay down without something to keep it there. Doesn't look like I got it perfectly centered. That other side looked a little bit bigger of a fold over than this, but that's fine. The cool thing about doing it this way is I used to like, um, on this book cover, I used to keep the center area um, unglued. 
so that it had the opening, but in this case, now that this thing is in there, I can just glue the entire back of the cover and just glue it all the way to the spine because I'll have the opening provided by this tube in the middle. Assuming that this thing works at all. I'm just, the thing I'm most nervous about is the wax paper completely attaching to the inside of this tube. I, I probably need to research some material, maybe silicone, I don't know. Something that doesn't stick at all to the glue. Yeah, you can see how much wider this side is than that side, so I just didn't get it centered properly, but that's fine. This is my first attempt. I'm going to wrap a piece of uh, felt around it and put it in a book press. I'm almost sure this this piece of um, wax paper is going to be really hard to get out of there, if not impossible. While that's drying, I'm gonna, oh shoot, you know what? Well, I'm gonna leave it in here for the, a minute. I mean, for a bit, just to add some pressure to it, but I need to get some measurements from that before it, I mean, I can't work on the cover unless I have the dimensions of the book. So yeah, this is all very unknown, very new. So I don't know what I'm doing, obviously. kind of the chicken before the egg thing like I can't measure it till I've glued that thing on there to get the added uh, thickness that the paper tube adds to the spine but I want to put it under pressure as soon as possible after I've glued it so I just need to measure it like right after I glue it I guess if I'm going to do this again which I have the feeling this is going to be a maybe not the ideal scenario maybe I'll never do this again Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to take a couple minute break, wash out my brush, and be right back and see what I'm going to do.
Hard to believe an entire hour has gone by already. Okay, so I need to pull this out to get measurements real quick. Um, let me get everything that I'm going to need for that first. Let me think. I need this. And the board itself, of course. Well, no, I don't need the board. Just making measurements. I need a little post-it note that I like to write my measurements on. Actually, this book might already have a post-it note in there. Not sure. I'll just pull it out and see. Actually, kind of later in the process where I give a book a name and a post-it note with all my calculations on there. Nope, there's not one on there. Oh yeah, there is. Okay, good. So this is where I'll write all my calculations. Unfortunately, I didn't really think this through. So it's good that I pulled that out because I had glue on down further than where this tube was, so it would have stuck pretty well to this belt. That's kind of a hard thing to figure out, honestly, like where to glue it. I guess I could put a wax paper around the out outside as well. I don't know. Okay, so let's get the width. The width I do by standing on its end like I did before, and I usually measure it from the center to kind of average out any irregularities. Once again, you have to have a ruler where the measurements start exactly at the edge, not with any extra border. Stand it up straight, perpendicular on the table, and put this on the table. And you can see how big it is. It's 13 centimeters exactly. Height equals, I actually do this in the middle. You could measure it at the spine or at the side, but in the middle, if there's any kind of ramping or irregularity, will kind of be the average. 13.95 or so. Pretty straight. When I'm cutting these and I'm sanding the edges, I do check if it's square and try to get it as close as I can. So it is 13.95 centimeters. And the other measurement I need is the spine, which will be pretty similar to what I had before. Oh, actually, no, I don't measure the spine until I get the boards. These are this is all I need. Oh, I didn't get the tube centered. That sucks. I might be able to cut that off. I might be able to see it's going up above the page a little bit there and it's a little bit short of the page here so I just kind of did a sloppy panic job I was like I don't know what I'm doing I gotta do this quick and wasn't super careful but it's fine I don't believe that'll affect really anything this side that's longer I think I might be able to cut it off as long as it's not stuck too much to the headband there we'll see Okay, so these are my dimensions for my boards. So I'm going to put this back in the book press while it's drying, and hopefully that glue is not as much of a problem now that it's dried a little bit. I don't think I need to put a wax paper in between that and the felt. should be okay. check though I didn't really think of this but normally when I'm gluing this kind of stuff I put a wax paper inside here to make sure it doesn't absorb through and glue this marble paper shut I'm 
This will be interesting. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. In this case, I have so many layers, like with this mole and um, the linen tape here, and it's been glued already. I think that glue will act as a buffer, so I don't think it's really possible for the glue to seep all the way through all that to glue this shut. It wouldn't be a bad precaution, but... I think it's probably safe. Oh, this will be under pressure for plenty of time to get that in place because it'll take me quite a while to get the cover ready. Well, I just need to cut the boards actually and then I'll take this out and measure the spine spacing. Okay. Let me check one of my previous books for see what my calculation is going to be. I might adjust it a little bit. Okay, so the height of the board, I add um, 0.3 centimeters, so three millimeters. And what that does is gives me this little lip here. Shoot, I can't see my OBS. Make sure that I'm... Yeah, so this little lip here on the top and on the bottom. So the 0.3 gives me that. So the height is the actual measurement, which was 13.95 plus 0.3. That's not going to change in this process. That's always worked for me, so I'm going to go with my traditional measurements there. So 13.95 plus 0.3 is 14.25. Yeah. And then the width. In the past, my measurement has been the measured width minus um, 0.7, and I think I think that'll work. So what I did is I had the that little tube wrapping around this either side 0.5, and I want that I want to make sure the board isn't on top of that. There needs to be a little bit of space between where that folds over and where the board starts. That gives it this kind of flexible zone here. Um, you can kind of see that it's it doesn't go all the way to the spine. Like it bends inside the pages. And that's a good thing. You need that, that little area where there's no board around the, the front and the back to give it a hinge area. And I might give it a little bit more than I normally do. Instead of 0.7, I might do like a whole centimeter short. So I was trying to think if that would be too much or not. Oh, actually, let me think. So it's it's kind of a double double calculation. So I'm adding 0.15 here for this lip. And then I'm taking some off on that side, so... short though. Just, I'm just trying to figure out 
where that's going to be. I think if I do a whole centimeter, it'll be okay. So 13 minus 1.0. This is an experiment, so if it ends up being not quite right, I'll adjust it next time. So the width is going to be 12.0. Okay, now we have my measurements. I can cut my boards. And I write this down so that if I have a successful test of um, like a measurement, then I, I know what the measurements I did were. Otherwise, I'll forget. I won't remember what I did. So since this is an experiment, it's especially important to write it down what I did. And I take notes of this on a spreadsheet so that I can uh, refer to it later if I forget. All right, where's that board? Okay, so I need 12 on the width. So as long as I have a total of 24 here, then I have, this is plenty big. I believe I will have more than that. Yep, I still have to trim one of the edges off, and then the height just needs to be 14. Yeah, we got plenty. I can even probably retrim this side that had the angle to it and make it more perpendicular, which I probably will. Okay. Sadly, even though um, it makes sense to use a reference edge as a to check for square, eventually it comes back to haunt you, so you can't do all of them that way. What I mean by that is, like, to get, to cut this edge, I used this as a reference, so I used this little stand here and used my square to mark that side. But I don't necessarily want to do that same thing to mark this other side. So the more times you do that, the more likelihood it could be slightly off. So instead, I'm just going to use this side as a reference. Plus, now that I know my actual measurements, I'm not going to be cutting this edge close like this one. I'm going to be cutting it where it actually needs to be, which is the height is... Now, remember... <clears throat> The grain direction is going this way, which means I want the spine going along that way. So the height of the book is actually this way, and the width is this way. I have to make sure I think about all those little details. Here's the side I marked with an X that I've cut already. This one is uncut. So I am doing the height of 14.25. And I can, if I want to, put this here to make sure I'm right on the edge. I just put that straight on the edge like that.
Pick that song and listen to it again. I'll try not to talk. So you can just... Oh, shoot. There we go. Try not to talk so we can just listen to that for a bit.
Love that song. Could listen to it over and over and over. <sighs> the other thing I completely forgot about is that I probably like to make this a magnet book. So I need to make this uh, third board here. And I was realizing I probably don't want to use this double thick board, even though that would match the boards I'm using, because I don't really want this board to be thick, because it kind of interrupts the flatness of, of the book. So if you had something that's sticking out massively far here, it just looks dumb. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm not going to use this double thick one that I've use for these other boards. I'm going to use just a regular single thick. I need to check the green direction. It's going this way. And I know I said before that it's good to use boards that have the same uh, treatment on either side, same surface and tension, all that. And this one has a coating on this side, but since it's just for the flap, I don't think it matters much. It's mainly the bigger boards that you don't want them to curve or warp. The lap on the magnet closure is not particularly important. It's not very wide. Okay, this does not look square at all, just eyeball. I put this on my grid and yeah, it's not it's not square, so I'm gonna cut every side like I usually do just to ensure that it's square. This, actually, this edge is, it's straight. As long as one edge is straight, that's all that matters. So then you can measure squareness off that one straight edge. I keep moving around these little things. I need to put them somewhere where they're not gonna get messed up. Don't know where that would be. Just over here, I guess. see how not square this is. This uh, side here is way smaller than that. You have to trust your square too, or find one that's good because I suppose they might make a square that's not square. That would be terrible. That'd be a horrible trick to play on somebody. I think you would see it with your eyes, though. Okay, so... This side is cut. This side is cut. Now I make the height the same as these. I already know that measurement, so I'm going to just use the measurement instead of marking it. Kind of your own personal taste, but I figure if I cut them the same way that I cut the other ones, then they should turn out the same way. So the height was first because I might be able to use this bigger piece for something. So I do not remember how I constructed these to try to copy it. I mean I don't remember what the dimensions were. Looks like four centimeters. Plus whatever that is. Let's see. Let's cut it at five.
I think about everything. There's a reason and detail for everything. The reason I didn't cut that dimension first is because then this height of this board would be compromised. Now I can use this whole height. So if I only cut out the part that I actually need to cut, I have more usable board space. I don't always do it that way, but it depends on the situation. Okay, so this should, in theory, match the height of these pretty well. Yep. Now I just need to cut this curve. I like the curve as opposed to straight. I also thought like an envelope angle. I considered all this when I was designing these and went with the curve. I like it. Um, I created this template so I don't have to figure out how much curve there is. Um, yeah, actually, I printed out a thing on the computer, if I remember right, and then I used that to create this curve. I just made a Bezier curve in, like, a vector program, so I knew it would be fairly consistent, and then I transferred that to this map board and cut it out. The reason there's these windows cut through is so that I can see the board underneath, so basically I... And then this line coming down here is where I place the back of the board. So here's my board. I need to center it, so I need to find out where the center of this is, which half of 14.25. Actually more like 14.2, so 7.1. And I may as well make that a line, just for fun. I don't remember if I need that or not, but it's not going to hurt anything. There's my halfway mark, so I line that up. This is the center of this curve, so... Oh shoot, wait a minute. Oh, that's right. I don't need that center line. So I put these windows at um, identical spacing from the center, and I also made these color codes so that I can see, just in a quick glance, this orange window matches with that orange window, this red one matches with that red one, and so on. So all I have to do is match the back of this board with this line going here, and then center it visually by... Oh, here's this the red window is where that comes out. So I make the red window here as well. Just visually eyeball it. Make sure this line is on the back. So that's centered. This basically how I know it's centered is, well, I guess I have to put it like this so you can see it. So this line matches the, the back of that board, and you can see the amount of white sticking out in this window is the same as that amount of white there. It's just kind of an eyeball thing. So that is centered and in position, and then I simply trace the, the front. Now, if you had like a piece of clear plastic that you made this thing out of, you wouldn't need those windows. That wouldn't be necessary, but since this is opaque, I had to make some way to see the board underneath it. And that works pretty good. So there's my curve. And I just cut that out. And we have our flap. A little bit difficult to cut these curves. But as long as you go slow and careful, it's not that hard. Usually takes a couple passes to get through. I try to, when I'm cutting boards like this, I don't try to cut all the way through in one pass. I'm liable to make mistakes or even cut yourself. It's better just to do it in a couple passes. Once the mark is set, it's easier to follow because your blade just goes into the, the mark that you've made.
So I have to go slow, otherwise it could escape the mark and cut part that you don't want to. There we go. There's my magnet flap. That doesn't look equal, does it? That's weird. Let me check that. Sometimes my eyes play tricks on me, but it looks like this is smaller than this. Let me see if that's true. Yeah, that's, that's the same. I don't know why. It's like an optical illusion. This looks shorter than this. This looks taller, but it's the same. Weird. Okay. Oh, the the probably my least favorite step is coming, just because it's kind of labor intensive. So since I'm making a magnet closure flap, there's actually magnets embedded in here. Remember, right? There's at least three. One, two, three. I might have put a bunch. I don't remember. And then I have to put the same magnets in the same position with the polarity of the magnets matching up so they close. It's easy to put them backwards and then it would repel open. You know what I mean? So, and they have to match their position exactly. And getting that position to be in the same spot and have this extra material here allow it to flex a little bit. It's just, it's kind of challenging. But for the placement, I generally, it's not that hard. I just put these together and measure from the corners. I'm going to get the magnets because I don't remember how big they are. Be right back. bunch of magnets here so these are probably the ones I'm going to use I have all these different sizes they're all rare earth magnets so they're really strong but surprisingly even though they're crazy strong I found that they don't s stick super well it's kind of weird Part of it might be because the first experiments I did with these magnetic flaps were um, I used a hot glue gun to uh, stick them to the inside of the boards. I found out later that the heat, intense heat, can actually weaken magnets. Um, 
I don't know how much exactly. You'd have to do some, read some scientific paper or something, but um, that may have played a role in in what I experienced. But if I use these tiny ones, for example, um, these are little discs. So each of these is a little button magnet. Oops. Great, where did it go? Probably jumped. Oh, there it is. So each one of these is just a little button like that. It's like one millimeter thick, and they're different varying sizes. You can order, you know, just about any size you want. Um, why is that? St what? Okay, that's weird. That was sticking to the. Look at that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like standing on the end. It probably found like a um, screw or nail in underneath the table or something. That's the only thing I can think of. But look, like as I bring, as I bring this board closer to it, it it was affecting how what? What in the world is going on? This board, as far as I know, is just paper. It shouldn't have any metal in it, but maybe it does. That is weird. What is going on? I'm not touching that. I don't have a magnet anywhere near that. That's a life of its own. Look at that thing. Okay. <laughs> what is going on? That was weird. Let's see if I can make that happen again. Okay, so for some reason it wants to lay on its end instead of laying flat. So clearly there's some metal underneath my cutting mat. Weird. I'm very confused at what's going on there. Anyway, there you go. Mysterious magnetic effects. No matter no, no matter how many times I try to lay it flat, it jumps up on its side. That is very strange. There must there has to be metal under on my table or something. What in the world? It's the weirdest thing ever. Maybe this uh, cutting mat has some metal in it. I don't know. Very strange. <laughs> anyway, that was a fun distraction. Um, if I used these tiny ones, I'd probably have to put like 10 in there. Like, And even on top of this board, it still wants to jump up. That is the... Okay, let's see how thick of a thing will buffer it from whatever's under there. I'm going to put like... Just a fun experiment. I'm gonna put two of these boards. Is that enough to allow it to lay flat? Nope. It still wants to go up on its side, even through two of these thick boards. How about if I lift it up into the air? Okay, if I lift it up into the air, it goes flat, but as soon as I... And of course it ran off to these other magnets. That is insane. Okay, let's try this. Laying flat, let's see how close I have to get to the table. It's a fun experiment. So I'm gonna put this ruler by the side so we know how close to the table before it stands up. Okay, I can pretty much get it all the way down. All right, we successfully got it to the table. If I kind of jiggle it around, will it stand up? I don't know. This is weird. Okay, let's take one of these out. Still not standing up. Okay. It's lost its uh, ghostly powers. Now it won't stand up. Weird. Okay, how about if I put it down? Now it's... What? Now it's laying flat. What in the world? Okay, that's that makes no sense at all. Nothing changed. The only thing that changed is it, it jumped to that other magnet. Maybe that other magnet changed something about this. You guys saw that, right? You're my witnesses. Let's try another one. Now it's laying flat. What? Okay, I must be in a magnetic vortex. You know, there's like several magnetic vortexes in the Earth. I don't know if you're aware of that, but there's these special places where magnetism is a little different. 
It must be in one of those. Now they're laying flat. What? What in the world? Okay. Maybe there's somebody under my table messing around with big, huge magnets. I have no idea what's going on. Okay. At least I have it on video to prove it that that happened. Okay, so, but if I use these tiny ones, I would probably have to use like 10 of them going across, literally, maybe more. And even with all of those together, it might not be enough to keep the flap close. Look at that though, look at how far away they attract. So I'm like way over here. That's how strong they are. Pretty nuts, right? You would think that that would be uh, strong enough to keep it closed, but no, you gotta use the big ones. Let's uh, see how close I can get before it uh, jumps. Wow, that's like five centimeters away. That's insane. Huh, that's crazy. Maybe there, I bet, you know what it was? This seems totally unlikely, but maybe these big magnets that I had on the table were placed in some exact configuration that was causing all that weird dancing around here. I had this other bag over here as well. Maybe there are converging magnetic lines down there somewhere. <laughs> I have no idea. That was so strange. Get it. Anyway, that happened. That was a thing. Okay, so let's get going here. So I have these bigger ones, and then I have these even bigger ones. I think either of these two are probably good. I think with these really big ones, I can use maybe just three of them, two on the side, one in the center. That should be enough. I wish I could remember how many magnets I used on that other book. Let me get these in this bag so they don't fly all over the place. It's hard to believe how strong these things are for being so small. Actually kind of hard to get them in the bag. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to use these, these big ones, I think, just to play it safe. So I need six of them, three for this flap and three for the, um, this thing. So you, you use quite a few of them. You really gotta find some cheap, good magnets. Otherwise it becomes a pretty expensive proposition. But it's incredibly important to make sure you line up your north and south poles, otherwise it'll repel instead of attract. And who wants like these sticking out your book, right? So the reason this takes so long is I have to actually carve like, a little area for those to go inside the, the boards. That's kind of a pain. Okay, I don't actually need to line lay those out. I just mainly wanted to see how big these were before I started cutting, uh, carving holes in my books. So they are, I think they're a centimeter maybe. Oh, they're even bigger. One point. About 1.2 is the diameter. Okay. So oh, now I need to figure out where to put them. I don't remember what I did in the past. Obviously one in the middle. I think I just put them in a straight line across, so I need to make sure that 
it goes far back enough that that's not like over that edge. So just let's see how far that is. Maybe about three centimeters would be a good good place. Three on center should be fine. That's probably what I did in the past. I'm not sure, but these honestly, these big ones don't even feel as strong as those small ones. Is that possible? I know every magnet has a strength rating in addition to its size, so when you order them, you have to pay attention to that, or you might get some weaker ones. I'm going to try these, because if they are not super strong, then maybe that's why I had the problem with the cover not sticking. No, they're pretty strong. Like, I can't even, I can't even pull that apart without quite a bit of effort. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. They just don't feel crazy strong. Let's see. So we, we measured that. It was about five centimeters where they picked up. Let's see if I can repeat that with these bigger ones. This isn't a very scientific test, but it's something. They're also bigger, so they're heavier, so they won't maybe pick up as... So yeah, I got got to four centimeters as opposed to five on the smaller ones. But like I said, more mass, so need more power to pull it together. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know how they actually measure strength of magnets, but that's that's the best I can do. I think they'll be good enough. But they don't they don't actually seem crazy strong. Only when you have many in a row in a series, then they get pretty be hard to pick apart, but when there's just a few like this, I can pretty easily pull them apart. Okay, what I've done in the past, um, to make sure I match the polarity, I've just put like a little red dot on these so that I remember which, which way is up or whatever. So let's just do that real quick. All of this gets kind of confusing now, because on one side the red dot will be up, and on the other side the red dot will be down, potentially. Okay, those are all marked. So we're going to make a line three centimeters up. For the center. I'm definitely not going to finish this cover today. You can see how long it takes and how slow I'm going. Until I've done this magnet thing many times, I, it'll be kind of slow like this. I've only made like five or six at the most. Every time I have to remember like how to do it. I've made about a hundred books total, but only about five or so with the magnet flaps. And this book that I'm doing here is, is a new thing. It's a little bit different than any book I've ever made, so going slower than normal just to make sure everything is okay. Let's see. Make these as close to the edge as is reasonable, but maybe one and a half on center. That be my center point. Okay, so what I did in the past is I made a little template, which is like 
one of these. Um, I guess I can... No, I need to make a template. I, you, you might think, well, I'll just put this on there and trace it. The problem is I can't see my mark and I can't ensure that that's centered necessarily. I guess if I make a... No, maybe this will be... Let's use, a, use my brain a little bit here. I want them to be centered because the full potential of the attraction of the magnets is going to happen when both are perfectly aligned. So let's make a crosshair like that and then I can maybe visually see. Now even then I can't tell if it's centered not very easily without being exactly over the top. So yeah, I'm going to make my little template. I used to have one sitting around. I don't know what happened to it, so I'll have to make a new one. And to do that, I'll just use a scrap board. Trace this on there. then make a X in the middle. Make sure to make this exact. I'll cut it out first, I guess. Nah, let's see. Is it 1.2? Yep. Okay, so 0.6 is this. Yeah, Center that way, and then do the same this way. Okay. Now I can cut this out, which is kind of hard to cut this small of a circle, to be honest. I think I'm going to... Got a bunch of straight lines, at least cut off parts of it and then try to smooth out the circle afterwards. careful when you're doing this kind of stuff. It could easily move the board. It slips and then you cut yourself pretty bad. Chop this bit off. why I don't cut very hard. I don't try to cut all the way through the board. I just cut lightly so it doesn't shift the thing around. Takes several passes, but it's safer that way. Especially when you're holding such a small thing like this. Now it's getting really hard to hold. <laughs> hmm. I wonder if I could almost use a... I could probably use a Dremel or something to cut it out, but... Some really strong scissors would do it too, but... This board that I'm using for this template is actually a very dense wax 
strengthened board, so it's not that easy to cut. Doesn't need to be perfect, but if it's something I'm going to use many times, like a template, then I try to do a good job with it. Ah. Speaking of good job, I just did a terrible cut there. Just a trapezoid, even a square would do, honestly. In the past, like when I first made my a magnetic book, I actually cut out a square. It was just, honestly, I think it's just easier that way, but I don't know. If you cut out a square, then you have to fill the hollow around the, the um, magnet, the circle magnet with something. And, when I was using the hot glue gun, that was pretty easy to do. You just fill that little space around it with, with glue. But they're using some kind of liquid glue. It's not quite as reliable. Like once I discovered that hot glue actually weakens the magnets, I haven't used it since. It's unfortunate because it really worked well. I used epoxy, which works fine, but it's kind of a pain to have to mix it, so... On the recent Hobby Lobby visit that I streamed my show and tell from, I got some new glue that I'm going to try this time. Hopefully it'll work great. Okay, that's pretty good. It's not a perfect circle, but yeah, who cares. Uh, all I really need is to get the crosshair inside. So let's try to do that. Now oh, the problem with this being um, that wax stuff is the, the pen ink isn't going to adhere to it. So I need to sand off one side. Easier said than done. All right, got down the paper. That worked. I didn't realize that it uh, was just kind of a coating. I thought it kind of soaked through, so. All right, there we go. Got my template cut pretty well. Just have to make the crosshairs so I know where to position it. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. My little permanent fine liner here. Now should I? I should probably mark it, not just eyeball it. Imagine the people that made rulers just eyeballed where they put the lines, so that wouldn't be very good. That does not look like the center. What in the world? Maybe eyeballing is better. I thought I just measured it properly and it's not. It doesn't look like the center at all. Whatever. Maybe I'll just eyeball it to me. Let's see. As I run out of lead, of course. To 
me right about there looks like the center. Again, it's not a perfect circle, so I can never get exactly the center, but I think that's pretty close. Now I just need to make an X. Should be simple, but it's kind of complicated. Like, how do I measure an exact 90, ang 90 degree angle from that? And I kind of missed. It doesn't look like the center anymore. I missed my mark. Even if you miss your mark by, like, tenth of a millimeter, it just looks off. So you got to be really accurate. So I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker to compensate for my mistake. Go on this side a little bit. Looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but good enough. And I'm going to eyeball the angle, too. Like, where's 90? Where's 90? This looks pretty good. I'll use the edge of this to mark my square, I guess. Once again, for some reason it's off a little bit, so I'll add a little thickness. All these little stupid details, like your pen gets pushed out a little bit from the ruler, which affects everything. It's just, you really have to mess with that stuff. It's annoying. It still doesn't look quite centered. I'm going to add a little bit more here. I don't know. It's not perfect, but I think it'll be okay. <sighs> be nice to just print that out. I guess I could have done that. Designed something in a vector program and printed it out and cut it out. That's probably what I should have done. Anyway. Okay. Now, the reason I put that crosshairs on there is now I can line these lines up with the lines that I have here. And be fairly certain that I have it lined up in that spot. Like so. And then I can just trace around it. And there's my circle that I need to cut out. It's not perfect, but I'm not going to be able to cut a perfect circle anyway. So close enough. The reason this matters, like I mentioned before, if I don't line these magnets up to their centers pretty accurately, they won't have their full potential sticking power. So I'm going to make these same same uh, holes in the same spots on that side. Looks pretty good. So I have to make those same measurements here. At 1.5 centimeters from the side. And then wherever the center is. Use my little square trick again, so if I put this on the line, and I can use the end of it to make sure this is 90 degrees.
that doesn't look straight. <laughs> I just eyeball this last one. Okay, then I use that to match up with this. You might think, well, why not just measure things from the outside instead of the center? I could do that. But then I have to do more math, and I feel like this is easier on my brain. Because I'd have to factor in, oh, make that square. You know, the square would have to be 1.2 centimeters, which is the diameter of the circle. And then half of that, you know, just uh, forget that. This is easier. Just measure them on center. Just like when you're, you know, hanging a picture on the wall, you don't account really for the width of the screw you, whatever you just measure on center especially if you have more than one screw that needs to be lined up or something you wouldn't measure to the side of the screw okay so there we go now oh, um Map boards or chipboard or whatever. You would think, isn't it like one solid thing? You can't really see, but it's actually composed of, you can see the two layers here because I glued two layers together. So that's pretty obvious. But even inside each of these two, it's actually like several pieces of paper basically glued together. So my goal here is to cut through enough of those layers and peel, peel back so that I can embed the magnet inside this board and have it be perfectly flush with the side. And it's just kind of an experiment. This, this takes forever, honestly. What would be great is to have like some kind of um, cylinder. Uh, let's see, I'll draw it out. And I could probably design something like this. How um, many scrap paper? see something like a cylinder attached to some kind of handle up here and this this side of the cylinder was like sharpened super sharp and then I could just like push down on it I actually have something kind of similar to that this is what I used to cut my um, the edges of my books um, and you'll see that eventually I'm not going to do it anytime soon but something like this that you could push down like a cookie cutter and it would go as deep as you wanted to push would be really nice for this but since I don't have anything like that I just have to kind of annually cut through a few layers try to go about as deep as the magnet is thick Usually takes a couple tries. And I just use the edge of the razor blade to pick up what I've cut out. It comes out in nice clean layers, like I mentioned, because the boards are actually kind of layers glued together. I think I need to go a little bit deeper, so I'll cut another layer out. Don't want to go too deep though. Needs to match the thickness of the magnet so that when it's all glued together, there will neither be a bump or an inset area. It'll be perfectly flat. Okay, let's check that. Basically, what I do is I just take the disc magnet, put it in there, and kind of move my finger around to see if it feels flat and if it's bumping out too much I take more out I think I'm going to take a little bit more out maybe one more thin layer Let's see, 
be a little bit easier if I just use these, probably. That should be about right, I think. Yep, nice and flat. So basically, and you might want to leave a little bit even deeper because I have to put some glue in there. As long as the glue isn't super thick, though, should be fine. Kind of rubbing off the red mark that I made, so I'm going to put that back on there. Okay, there's one down and five to go. It's a pretty time-consuming process. I'll probably end the stream when I finish gluing each of the magnets in there, and it'll have to dry for at least 24 hours. So I'm not going to be able to finish this cover today or anything. So I need to use the bathroom, so I'll be right back. Just want to make sure not to cut all the way through the board, obviously. It's the key. With this double thick board, there's zero chance of that. But on the thinner one, which this flap is a single thick, it's actually kind of hard to cut just the right depth without cutting all the way through. Okay, that should be good. Double check it. Yep. 
It's actually kind of good if the circle is just a little bit bigger than your magnet, just slightly, so you don't have to wedge it in there. Plus, the glue needs a little bit of room to to be, to exist, but not too much. And the fact that you trace around the template, whenever you trace like around a circle, the line that you make is a little bit bigger than your circle anyway. So being that I'm tracing that, or I'm cutting along that traced thing, my circle hole will be a little bit bigger than the magnets. So it all works out. I got that in one shot. Might have to go another layer. Hmm. It's feeling pretty good. I don't know if I went as deep as the other one, though. Let me see. Yeah, I think so. Got lucky. You did it the first try. Okay. So those are ready. I'm going to cut all six of them before I do the gluing so I can do all, all the gluing at the same time. Okay, here's the challenge. I have to cut deep enough into this one. And honestly, the board is pretty much the same thickness as the magnet, so there there might be a little bit of bump on this. This is a pretty thin map board, so this will be interesting to see how it works. Kind of feel on the other side to see if it's tender at all to see how far you've gone through but i think i can go a little bit deeper That looks about right. Yeah, the magnet's sticking up a little bit, but I don't want to cut too deep so that I still have some some of the board left to glue onto. Like I said, I'm using a different glue than I've used before, so I don't know much about it. It supposedly sticks to metal though, so metal and glass. It should work fine. It doesn't really need to stick that much anyway, because this is going to be covered with layers of stuff anyway, so it mainly just so it doesn't move around too much. That's all I'm trying to accomplish. That's good. One more.
All right, I think we're good. I'm gonna save my template here so I can use that for future books. Easy to lose little things like that to put it in a Ziploc bag or something. Okay, all six are done. I guess they're about the same. So here's the trick. You gotta match the, the poles of the magnets up. And the complicated thing is that this one's actually gonna flip around this way. So you, you don't put all the reds up. The red, you know, if normally you have red and blue on a magnet kind of diagram. So if I have all of these marked red for the same pole, I would do these three with the red marking up. So I mark these with a Sharpie just to match up their polarity. So those three, the red would be up, and then these three, the blank side would be up. That way when this comes over and hits there, north and south will match up and it should attract instead of repelling. So probably what I should do is put a I actually have a blue Sharpie somewhere. I don't know where it is. I'll just have to remember that these three have no red showing and these have the red showing or vice versa. Okay, we're... Alright, so this glue that I'm using is, you're not supposed to breathe in the fumes, so I'll just have to be careful with that because I'm not really in a super well ventilated area, but generally it probably should be. I'll just not use it for very long. This is what I'm going to use. I normally use epoxy, and prior to that I'd used hot glue. Hot glue works really good. I just heard that it will damage the magnets, so um, I've been looking at other options. Epoxy is annoying because unless you have a bunch of books to do, you mix up the epoxy and it dries within five minutes, so um, any extra glue that you have can't be used for anything. You can't even put it in an airtight container, it's still going to harden. Um, so this stuff, I don't have to mix the two, um, two things together, so I feel like I, I can just open it up, push out as much as I need, and close up the tube and hopefully Hopefully it won't dry out. Say it says I have to puncture the seal and the neck tube using the pointer cap. That's pretty standard, kind of like super glue. Um, ideal application between 50 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. We're good there. Allow 24 hours for curing, depending on materials and temperature, maximum strength may not be reached for 48 to 72 hours. So yeah, I'll <clears throat> definitely wait at least a whole day. One thing that might be wise, but I'm not going to do, <laughs> is wearing gloves. If I, I don't want to waste a pair of gloves just for this little project, um, so I'll just try not to get any on my hands. Might be hard, but... Um, let me get a paper towel ready to wipe these off, I guess. But if I had a bunch of books to do, like that's what I would normally do is kind of an assembly line process. But this is one book I'm experimenting with, so I'm just doing one. Because I don't I want to make sure this works before I do it to any other books. Um, but if I had several books, I would wear gloves, you know. I wouldn't feel like I'm wasting gloves for just one small 
single book project. So here's hoping that this cap seals airtight once I puncture this, otherwise this won't go too well. I mean, I won't be able to use this same tube many times. Let's get these ready, lined up where they need to be. So I can just slide them into place. Let's use this to puncture the cap. I hope it's not too oozy, hopefully messy of stuff. Might be a little bit oozy. Oh, put way too much on there. Kind of hard not to. I don't know how this is going to work, honestly. Might be a mess. Phew, this is messy. That stinks. Okay, got it closed up. Definitely don't want to breathe this stuff too much. Now I'm just going to slide these on there. Push them on. I'm not going to push them on until I, I'm going to use a paper towel to push them on so I don't get it on my fingers. Just get them kind of in position. Do the final pushing with the paper towel. You can use that to clean up the excess. All right, that actually worked pretty well. And we'll just have to wait a day to see if it actually works. Honestly, it, I don't think it matters. I can, the only thing I know I can't use for sure that wouldn't work. Oh, shoot. It popped out of there for some reason. I think on this one, I just didn't get enough glue in the right place. I kind of missed my circle a little bit. This stuff is messy, though. I might use like a popsicle stick applicator just to get it in where I need that might be a little bit easier to manage this is I can see this being problematic okay red red circle down on this one got a lot of glue in there so this will be messy Got a little bit on my fingers that time too, so I'll have to wash my hands when I'm done. Okay, not bad. I think other than maybe using a popsicle stick, like, you know, take a popsicle stick and Put a little glue on the end of a popsicle stick and then press that into the hole. I think that would make a little bit cleaner operation. Other than that, I think that should work pretty good. So I will wait at least 24 hours before I check these and go to the next step. But I'm pretty positive it'll turn out okay. As long as they stay in there, more or less, they don't need to be like super strong because, I, like I said, I'm going to cover this with several layers like fabric and paper and stuff for the cover so they should be fine so i'm going to go put these in a place where they can air out so i don't have to breathe that fume it's not actually crazy strong just kind of like like a super glue and other, any other of those chemical smells so anyway i think i'm going to end the stream here that's kind of what my goal was for the for the night is to get those in place so they can start drying and then Next time that I do this, I will work on the cover and measure the dimensions and cut it and all that stuff. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. Hope you have a good weekend coming up. I guess it's, what is it? What is today? Thursday? Beginning of Thursday? Anyway. All right. I'll see you guys.